Good morning, everybody. It is 5.45 in the morning, Thursday, March 21. It is the FOMC Hangover Day, the FOMC standing for Fuck Over My Contracts, as, again, FOMC days are wild and wacky and got everything that we expected on, as I said, going into that two o'clock meeting. Nothing. Two o'clock, you got your big bang, and then you started to come down into the 2.30. And that was when, didn't matter, had absolutely no pending issue at all of any comments or any questions that were very, very good to have anything from the pre-programmed video game, which is what you're playing, and it is a video game, going for that 5226. Now, this in a short term, again, coming back to the FOMC prep, yada, 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 yada. Since the SBX is in a very, very small monthly range, consistently still producing higher highs, higher lows, until there is a break below that 5091 and more so 5048, the bulls are continuing the two suggest, which I don't know where my English was, but whatever, the low odds moonshot for 5254, 5320 is what's expected. Again, only based off of Fibonacci's and the higher highs, higher lows is the view relevant supported by higher lows. More than anything else, and thus a break under 5090 and more so 5048 is the requirement. Very possible yesterday, obviously, did not occur. You have your 5320, 5328, double Fibonacci drawing, bang, bang, bang. All of it lines up. All of it is just a little bit too picture perfect to not take on the opportunity. And I will take this moment here to say it's March 21, 2024, and it's 547 in the morning. Any long exposure you have on anything take the money take the money and go sit on the sidelines if you cannot play puts go take the money sit on the sideline your opportunity to buy back in and get long again will be coming in a matter of a couple of months take the money so I bring it over to today, which today is a little bit of data. We got jobless claims at 8.30. You have your PMI. You get existing home sales. You have a four-week auction, a Fed's bar, the 10-year auction at 1 o'clock. And then tomorrow, you have the ECB speakers who are on completely opposite sides of Europe. One of them is over there saying... There is no way in hell that we are cutting rates. It's never going to happen. And then you have the other group over there, because remember, Europe is a different place. It's not the United States. It's got, it, they have a different mentality over there. You have the other side saying, yes, we absolutely will be able to start cutting rates as early as June and continue cutting rates. These are your different people. You know, Again, remember your whole global warming Headliner came out of Sweden. Powell speaks at nine o'clock tomorrow morning, and that's it. It's over. So due to the events that have occurred on my side, today will be the video for the week into tomorrow. I won't have a video tomorrow. I will have one out on Sunday, but I will not have one out tomorrow. So this is the one as of where we got to and where we've been from. So again, We've made it to 52.24.62 yesterday on our FOMC spike. We so eloquently had just now happened to be plus 10% year to date. And here we are on March 20th. We're up 2.47% on the month. And as I pointed out earlier in the month, we were down negative on the month back there on March the 5th. That's the first time that we have been negative on the month since our little dip on January 17th since the beginning of the year. Now, more so to that, everybody knows, everybody should know, SPX 4811 was the all-time highs going into 2022. It was here in January when we recovered that 
4811 area. However, I'll point this out. As you see, on January 12th, we reached up to 4,800, took two days, and we were back down out of that century mark and down into the 4,700s. Over here on January 24th, we reached into the 4,900s and we're back into the 4,800s the very next day. We did play around in the 4,900s before eventually putting in the lower low on January 31st, where we had the big sell-off right there, 27-point gap down, minus 80 points on the day, down here to 48.15. When we went to 5,000, on the day of 5,000, we closed below it. We went back there for a couple of days on February 8th, and then again, went back down to place that low 4920 which is the big 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 bull support down at 4920 come again in here to 5100 we went into 50 5100 february 23 immediately retraced back down into the 5000s the century marks well this needs to be changed for my color coding so that i can see it properly and we have gone into the 5200s for the very first time yesterday. So playing a video game for what the video game is to be played for, a drop below 5200 should essentially be on the table in the cards for today, tomorrow. Minus 5200. Now, with that being said, as you saw, 5175 support all day long yesterday. Zoom you out, and your 5175 resistance is now your support. 5175 is your primary support. Nothing but that. I won't even go into the discussion about breaking down below that because you already know where your bottoms are underneath that with your 5131 protecting your weekend gap. On your gaps, just so you can see, you may not be able to see this as good as I can because I do this and everybody else can do this. You have 14 gaps going down here to the October low. 14, I believe. I might be off by one. I could be 15. And you have yet, on this entire climb, to have a 3% dip. So again, as we have tried to look at this from a multiple number of different ways, you have got everything that you could have possibly wanted all lined up right up in here into this 5200, 5263. Go for a moonshot to 5320, but can't see it happening. And what I'm looking at here as to why is like I mentioned to Chris over there in the uh, futures room, is you're looking for that 53.13. We got 53.13 over here on the ES overnight, and here we are retracing back under 53.13. Now, for very obvious reasons, your five-day, 10-day moving averages will always be your support levels after you've made these big moves up, and they are to be down well, well, well below where anything was seen yesterday. I'll remove what I've got here on the 50 and the 20 and your five and 10 day that were down at 5150. Your five day moving average will be moved up here to your 5175 area. So again, 5175 is your bottom. Looking at it from a data point of view, just only data, 5200s got visited, 5100s got visited, 4900s got visited, 4800 even got visited. The only one that didn't work like that was the 4700s, even 46.9, the 4600s, right back down into the 4500s, closing above, but there again. Now, here's another interesting note on you, and this might be taking up too much of people's time in the morning, but hey, you know, we've closed green three days in a row. We had a three day in a row close stint back here towards the end of February. We had four in a row over here back in the early part of February. And you had your big run over here in January where you had six in a row. Not saying anything for anything other than the fact that you are into not only overbought, 
but you are into cell divergences on your bigger, wider time frames. Number one. Number two, this is your VIX. And your VIX is always, always a gift to go out two weeks, one month, two months, three months on your SPY, on your QQQ, when your VIX is at 1339 or below it, and position yourself into very, very, very cheap puts. Doesn't mean you need to go out of the money because you have a cheap VIX. One could imply, again, just being intelligent. You're up in the 520s. 517 is your support level. You go out and look at the May 17th. 517 puts. When we are down, okay, just bring this into a bigger, broader, wider picture. When we are down in the 505 area, which again ties in right there with that 50-50 area, your 517s will be worth a minimum of $12. And I can guarantee you right now, guarantee you right now, without even looking at it, that your SPY May 17th, 517, 513 puts, 517 puts are not going to cost you anywhere near $12. Bring you over to the QQQ, and again, 433.50. Go and fuck yourself, 433.50. And here was your move off of 433.50, a perfect 3.63% move right to the all-time highs here overnight. Over onto your IWM. IWM, once again, having come right down to touching, going negative on the year, and right back up to this 207.21, which, again, allows me the opportunity to discuss Boeing. The fucking planes are falling out of the sky. The doors are falling off. The wheels are falling off. They're lighting on fucking fire on runways. And this move here is because they are going to produce less 737s each month. They're still making these flying fucking bombs. And because they're making less, you're back up above that 185.71, which was the big play two weeks back for the drop below 185.71. So that covers most of that. And here's your dia. The Dow Jones has taken on the strength of this final little push that we're in. And here's your Dow Jones right here going up to the 300 extension, which stems off of your October bottoms. Looking at it from a wider view so you can see where we're coming from. And we're coming from right here. Bang, bang, boom, 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 boom. You've been trolling and hating 389, 390 for weeks. We're, we're going all the way back here to the beginning of February, not being able to surpass that 389, 390 level. And then yesterday, out of the blue, right up to the 300 extension, perfect little move to 396. But hey, it's not 400, so there's no reason to get short yet. That's what people will be thinking. So bring it over here again into this bigger, broader, wider view of the gaps over on the SPX. And again, if you are long, whatever long, whatever it is you're long, your 401k, your IRA, your retirement plan, your personal portfolio, your fucking Bitcoin, it doesn't fucking matter what it is. Go look at it. Take a very hard look at it and ask yourself, do you really, really, really want to take the risk of keeping that position on? When you know you're going to have an opportunity coming to you very shortly to get back into it. Because again, here you are with your QQQ, right back up to where you were. Here you are with your IWM, right back up to where you were. And here we are right now, March 24, looking at the exact same scenario that we had going back to when I was younger, trading as a broker, going into the dot-com peak, which took place right there on March the 24th. Sorry, looking at this from a daily point of view. So yeah, March 24, March 31, 2000 is what I had typed in here. I apologize for having the date the wrong way. Up 25.88% from the October lows of 1999. And 15 days later, we were down 13.75% on April 14th. Because over here at the end of the month is where you start getting that big move. You guys remember there were well, many of you weren't even around back then, but there was an enormous amount of shifting that was taking place on the last few days of March, moving out of the market. It was a lot of big mutual fund movement that was taking place back then. 
And here you are, March 24, March 24, and here's your dot com. Go over here, and this is the rally that we talked about of getting the bounce. This is going up into September, which is, again, into the election. And then your drop into the election as well, which allows me to bring you back to what we talked about before. This is your October into May 29 of 1998. 1988. October, the big October Wall Street crash. Bang. Humongous crash. 1987. Going into May. 19. Here's your 1992. This is when Bill Clinton, in that beautiful dress with his shoes on Epstein's couch, this is your October, November, December. This is your December lows going into the beginning of January, where your bottom came in here right around the early part of April, beginning of the year of an election year. 1996, again, re-election of Bill Clinton going into the dot-com boom. Right up here into February 13th, your bottom, first bottom here in March, and then your lower bottom here in the early part of April. Come in here to the dot coms. We've already covered that. Here's your dot com high, minus 13.75%, 15 sessions after March the 24th. Here's your 2004. W getting reelected. We are already in Iraq. The World Trade Center has already been attacked. We topped here on March the 5th, had a nice little dip here into the early, late portion of March, little bounce, and then your bottom coming here right around the early part of May. 2008, everybody knows that on March 9th, 2009, that was when the market bottomed in 2009. This is you going in from 2007, the beginning of the crash, into 2008, which bottomed here in the early part of March, and then you got your bounce before the rug got pulled. Here's your 2012 Obama re-election, having already dipped minus 20% going into October, the rally went until April 2nd before the decline came on, and the decline, I don't have it here, 1422 down to below 1300. I'm not a mathematician, but it's an 8 or 9% decline. Here's your 2016, very, very stagnant 2014, 2015, 2016, all of them coming down to the 1850s, and then your big decline after interest rates were raised for the very first time in history, or not in history, but since the financial crisis, and you drop down here onto February 11th, 2016, when crude oil bottomed at $25 a barrel, and OPEC came out with their agreement with the Dow Jones bottoming just prior over here on January 20th, right back up into this 2115 area, and then Brexit took place, Brexit taking us down here into the 1900 area. And then you have your election year of Donald Trump losing to Joe Biden, 2020, February 19th being COVID, your big bottom coming there in March, and nobody needs to discuss the obviousness of that having taken place. So once again, it is a bigger, broader, wider picture of not looking at this from a one minute, two minute, three minute type of zoomed in positioning, because that is not what is your benefit at this time. And at the same time, it's the same as we discussed with the emails of positioning yourself properly, because where we are about to take place here going into Friday will be the 18th of 21 weeks closing green. We're up much greater than that 26.45% having posted the new all-time highs now. And like I've shared from you before with all different multiple kinds of views as to where we are set up, what everything looks like, and this going back here to 1970, where over the course of 23 weeks, 20 of them were green, three of them were red, and then we had a 15% decline before recovering Richard Nixon's getting busted by Watergate with the tapes and I am not a crook and going up and going further with the bottom here being when the Grateful Dead invaded the UK and they made their first ever concert tour outside of the United States. So 
have it as you like. It is a bigger, broader, wider game as much as you want to be involved in it. And it's a very short game, which will rip you to shreds and tear you to pieces if you want to be in the tight zone. Today, not very much on the table. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. For the 10-year auction being at 1 o'clock. Overnight, we were already up, what, 20 points, right up to where I showed you there on the ES, right around that 5350. So as I've shared, look, plan, expect, and hope that it happens today and not tomorrow, the drop on the SPX below 5200 with 5175 being your support. Your time is limited. So don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary.